So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, ahbaduhu wa usalli ala rasul al-kareem, amma ba'd, fa'audhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In studying the fiqh of taraweeh and its principles, many important lessons come out. And for the students of mine that will be listening to this, it will be great for you because it's going to give you a more comprehensive view of how to understand Islamic law and how Islamic law works. Okay? For this, uh, we will be using a classical text, uh, Nurul Ilah, uh, and we're going to read it and then I'm going to explain it. I'm going to try to make this relatively a dry topic. Um, it's a very deep uh, topic when you go into the details of it. It's a very deep topic, but I'm going to not go too deep. I'm going to keep it just to the basics and try to not let it become too dry. This is one of those subjects, if you start reading in a book, it's uh, one of those subjects if you dive deeply into, uh, you're going to see a lot of nuances, a lot of difference of opinions. Um, but the most important thing is to understand methodology of Islamic law and uh, how the old scholars used to think. With this, uh, I want to especially talk about in the month of Ramadan, uh, the spirit of Islam, the spirit of Ramadan. Shah Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an. Shah Ramadan is the month in which Allah revealed the Qur'an. But as uh, I will talk about that, but let's first talk about some of the fiqhi uh, issues, some of the legal issues, okay? So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, uh, Fasl fi Tarawih. So this is the chapter uh, regarding uh, Tarawih, okay? Uh, Sunnatun li rajal wa nisa. So, uh, this is meaning this prayer, Tarawih, is a sunnah for the men as well as for the women. Okay? Now, uh, let me just uh, share something for, with you. Okay? The Tarawih is in Islamic law something, there's something called sabab. Something happens because of something. The Tarawih prayer, does it have a timing? Can you pray Tarawih prayer anytime you want? Can you pray at Dhuhr time or, or Fajr time or Asr time? No, it has a timing. When does the timing of Salatu Tarawih start? And when does it end? And if Salatu Tarawih has a time in which it must start, and it has a time in which it must end, then is it connected to the Salatul Jama'ah of that time? Meaning, in other words, let's say it's Isha time. Okay, this is what I want to do. I want to teach you the principles. The principles. The, the underlining reasoning. The, the legal logic of Islam. Okay, if the time for Salah comes in, for example, the time for Isha comes in. Okay, the time for Isha comes in, and uh, you uh, say, okay, I'm going to pray Tarawih prayer. And then after my Tarawih prayer, I'll delay my Isha prayer. Can you do that? Okay. So this is the thing. How do we determine such a... How do we legally determine uh, something like this? So let's go back to the beginning. The Tarawih prayer is a prayer the Prophet never did. The Prophet ﷺ led people in tahajjud prayer in Ramadan three times. And he said, I don't want to do it more because it would become compulsory upon the believers. And tarawih means to make things easy, which means that instead of the hardship that one has to go to, through to go to sleep and then wake up and then pray, this is right after Isha. So how did we come to this prayer? We came to this prayer by... Umar bin Khattab radiallahu an, he was one day, what, uh, sitting by his companions. Uh, hold on one second. Uh, Umar bin Khattab was sitting by his companions, or he went into the masjid and he saw different groups of people praying. And he said, we should all pray together. And this prayer was called Tarawih prayer. Okay. Now, the Prophet never prayed Tarawih prayer. He prayed the Hajj that night during Ramadan. So how and what gives us the right to start an ibadah, a prayer, that the Prophet never started? So, the answer to that is ijma' of the Sahaba, the ijma' of the companions of the Prophet 
If the companions of the Prophet have an agreement on an issue, like Abu Bakr is the Khalifa, or the putting the Qur'an in the form of a book, or the Tarawih prayer, which all form, uh, meaning Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, all the children of the Sahab that were living in Medina, for example. Imam Abu Hanifa and all the companions of the Prophet that were li living in this garrison city where more than 2,000 companions of the Prophet lived in Kufa, Imam Shafi in his mazhab, Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal in his mazhab, even till today in Mecca and Medina, they read 20 rak'ah. And that is because of the ijma of the companions of the Prophet I don't want to argue over 8 and 20 <clears throat> because that will be a separate. But over here it should suffice that for the people that follow the Zahiri mazhab, that uh, they want to do what the Prophet ﷺ did and they argue the Prophet only did eight. Okay, but the Prophet also said that مَنْ قَامَ بِهِ إِمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ وَمَا تَأَخَرُ Whoever stands up at night in the days of Ramadan إِمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا with Iman and taking himself to task, right? غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ وَمَا تَأَخَرُ All his sins before and after will be forgiven. So we could say from a Zahiri Madhab perspective that eight is Sunnah, okay? But what you you can do more than that, that's also Sunnah because the Prophet says, Man qama bihi, whoever stands at the night, the whole night it can be 10, 20, 30, 100. It's the, that is there, okay? Just only, I, right now I'm trying to establish something about the Tarawih prayers. You cannot just pray Tarawih prayers. The Tarawih prayer by the Ijma' of the Sahaba, which the Tarawih prayer came into existence as an Ijma' of the Companions of the Prophet, just like putting the Qur'an in the form of a book. The Ijma' of the Sahaba is that this prayer will be done after the Salatul Jama'ah of Isha. So it is Sabab. Because you prayed this, now you can pray this. Okay, so this is called Sabab in Islamic law, in the Asul al-Fiqh. Sometimes something is nahi. Because you did this, you can't do this. And something, something is a, is a shart. It's a condition. You need to pray. So the shart is, the condition is, to pray you have to have wudu. And sometimes something is sabah. Because you did this, now you must do this. For example, if you break your fast, now you have to fast for 60 days or feed the poor or whatever have you. Right? So, it is salatul jama'ah. When does Tarawih start? After, not Isha time, specifically, but specifically, it starts. You cannot have Taraweeh prayer except after Salatul Jama'ah in the Masjid, after the Isha prayer is done. Okay? So, Salatul Taraweeh is considered a Sabab in the month of Ramadan after the Isha. Only in the month of Ramadan. Only after Salatul Jama'ah. Only when Salatul Jama'ah will be done can you now start Salatul Taraweeh. You can't say, well, I'm going to pray my Taraweeh prayers. That would actually be more like Nafal prayers and then pray my Isha prayer. But you can't pray. And then some of the scholars have said that if the Imam that is leading the Salatul Isha, okay, or if the Imam that is leading the Taraweeh prayer did not offer his prayers in congregation then he cannot lead Taraweeh prayers this is the opinion of many of the Fuqaha because they consider Salatul Aisha be to be the sabab, the cause by which you can now pray the Taraweeh prayer, so if you're not in the in the Isha prayer in congregation then you cannot lead Salatul Taraweeh according to many of the Fuqaha okay now you may now the idea is not if you agree or disagree based upon the knowledge you have or the understanding you have. The idea is to understand the perspective, the principle, the legal reasoning. So let me just share this same point from a different perspective. Okay. Let us say that the Imam who led the Isha prayers is different from the Imam who led the Taraweeh prayers. Okay. The Imam who led the Isha prayers is different from the Imam who led the Tarawih prayers. After the Tarawih prayers are done, the Imam of the Isha prayer announces, Oh, oh, I forgot I didn't have wudu. I didn't have wudu during my Isha prayer. 
Now the Imam of the Tarawih prayer was different. So, some of the scholars, especially the Hanafi scholars, they'll say, oh, well, the Isha prayer is what causes the Tarawih prayer. If the Isha prayer was invalid, then the Tarawih prayer will also be invalid. We have to re-pray Isha as well as the entire Tarawih prayer. We have to pray the Isha prayer as well as the entire Tarawih prayer. Do you follow the logic? The Tarawih prayer comes into existence only as a result, as a cause of the Isha prayer, Salatul Jama'ah. And because if the Salatul Jama'ah that causes the Tarawih prayer is invalid, then all of the Tarawih prayer also becomes invalid. So this is the legal reasoning. Okay. Now, let's talk about another issue here that you should all know and is very basic. And that is that no Salatul Jama'ah can be led by a person who has not reached Balu. You cannot lead prayers if you haven't reached puberty. But, even though the person who is leading the prayers has to be somebody who is actually in a status of responsibility of doing that prayer. I'll give you an example. If I'm one years old and my parents take me to Hajj, did my Hajj take place? I get the reward of Hajj, inshallah. But the status of me doing Hajj is not completed because for me to complete Hajj, I must be of the age to do Hajj. If the person leading the prayer is not sane, not Muslim, or not in pub above the age of puberty, has crossed puberty, then he cannot lead prayers. Let's ask another question. Can the person who is behind the Imam who is sane and Muslim, reached the age of puberty, can the person who is behind the Imam and has not reached the age of puberty, and he knows his Qur'an, can he correct the Imam? Can he correct the person who is leading the prayers? And the answer is yes. Even though he has not reached puberty, but he is allowed to correct the Imam. Okay? So now, uh, let's look at this text over here. Sunnatul Rijal wa Nisa. So, Salatul Tarawih is Sunnah for the men and for the women. Okay? Wa Salatuha bil Jama'a Sunnah Kafaya. Meaning, the Salah of Tarawih prayer is in Jama'a. It cannot be done alone. And it is Sunnatul Kafaya. Now, this is interesting. It is a Kafaya. It is a, as long as some people in the community are doing it, it is a Sunnah. But it is not a Sunnah in the sense the Prophet never did it. It is a Sunnah in the sense that it is Ijma' consensus of all the companions and the Prophet Alaikum Sunnati on you is my Sunnah. Wa Sunnatul Khulafa al Rashidin al Mahdiyin. So Umar did it, Uthman did it, Ali did it. And the whole Ummah did it after. Okay? So, it's an interesting ibadah in that sense. Okay? It's really an ibadah of unity of the Ummah in a sense that, uh, you know, it wasn't initiated by the Prophet. It was initiated by his disciples, by his Hawariyin, by his, I mean, the Prophet, his Sahaba, his companions of the Prophet Wasallam. Okay? So now, وَقْتُهَا بَعْدَ الصَّلَاةُ isha. And its time comes in after Salatul Isha. وَيُسْحَى تَقْدِيم with عَلَى تَرَاوِيح And it is correct. It is not wrong. It is not invalid to pray Salatul Witr before Taraweeh. وَتَأْخِيرُ anha Or delay it after Salatul Taraweeh. وَيَسْتَحِبْ تَأْخِيرُ التَّرَاوِيح But better is that you delay the with the prayer till end end of the Tarawih prayer. Ila thuluthul layli aw nisfahu. Okay? And then the Tarawih prayer will continue or is till two-thirds of the night or till half of the night. And as for the Tarawih prayer, la yakrahu ta'khirha. 
There's no disliking if you want to delay the Taraweeh prayer. إِلَى مَا بَعْدَهُ عَلَى الصَّحِيحِ Okay? The more you delay the Taraweeh prayer, the better it is. Nowadays, of course, we uh, it's already like 9, 10 o'clock by the time we pray Taraweeh. And then, وَهِيَ عَشْرُونَ رَكَعَ And it's 20 rakahs by consensus of all of the four mazahibs. And بِالْأَشْرَةَ تَسْلِيمَاتِ And by 10 تَسْلِيمَاتِ 10 salams. Okay? So you can't combine 2 and 2. Uh, you can't combine them into four and then have less tasneems. So if you did it four, it'd be in five, four, four times five. So you can't just do four, four, four. You have to do two, two, two. And then you say th your tasneemat. Some scholars of the opinion, you can do four, four, four. And that is a Shah's opinion, a weak opinion. And uh, don't need to go into that. Oh yeah, I forgot to, let's go back to the one of the questions I had. So let's say, Somebody comes to uh, the masjid, the Isha prayer is done, and now he leads Trawi prayer. So the scholars will say, well, wait. Salatul Isha Jama'ah is the condition by which Trawi prayer is done. If he did not do Salatul Jama'ah, he cannot lead in Trawi prayer. Remember that? Okay. Now, I want you to think if this is correct. But some of the scholars, they say, well, the way around this is what? The way around this is that if he comes to the masjid, Isha prayer is already done, he takes some of the people that have come late and prays Salatul Jama'ah with them. Or people that have already prayed Isha and he says, wait, I'm the Imam, I need to pray, I need to pray in congregation, Salatul Isha in the time of Isha, so now I will also be allowed because Salatul Isha is Salatul Isha in Jama'ah is what allows Trawi prayer to be held. So if he didn't pray Salatul Isha in Jama'ah, how can he lead Salatul Trawih? You see, uh, this is the parts of our traditional Islam that a lot of people, this type of reasoning, uh, people don't realize that there is a reasoning behind uh, these rulings and how they work. And so I want us to appreciate that and become, uh, you know, somewhat, uh, not necessarily formalized in it, but at least have some appreciation for, okay, this is how they were thinking. So now you will either get people who didn't pray Isha, get them, and you need prayers. Now you've prayed Salatul Isha in Jama'ah, which now the suburb of that, the cause of that, is now you can pray Taraweeh prayers. Okay? Or, uh, the people who've already prayed, you take some of them and pray Salatul Taraweeh with them. So your Jama'ah can be done, so now you can be in Taraweeh prayer as a leader. Okay? Yes, somebody can come into the masjid, and he missed Isha. He can pray his Isha prayer, and then he can join the Salat al-Taraweeh as a muqtadi, as a follower, but not as a leader. Okay? For the leader, the sabab ruling will apply. But for the muqtadi, the followers, the, the sabab ruling doesn't necessarily apply. Okay. Having said this, so the leader has to have done it. Just like if the leader has read Fatiha and he goes into Ruku, you join the Ruku, the leader read Fatiha for you. Right? So the meaning Imam, he's already read Fatiha for you, you're in Raku. And you're counting that Raku as valid, as a Raka that you have done. So now when he's, uh, now you will not repeat that because the Imam did it. So the same way, when you join Salatu Taraweeh, because the Imam has already joined a congregation which allows Taraweeh to take place. So now he can lead, he can, he can be in the, now, now when the Imam has led Taraweeh, or he has been in, in a, when the Imam has joined a Jama'ah, and now he's the Imam, so he's been part of that process that allows the Sabab to take place. I hope I'm clear here. Okay. So, uh, let's now look at the text a little bit more. Oh, before I forget, some of the scholars, especially within the Hanafi fiqh, they don't consider it Sunnah, because the Prophet didn't do it. They consider it Mustahib. It's preferred. It has a preference. So some of the scholars say it is sunnah because of it is the ijma of the companions of the Prophet. And some of the scholars, they said, no, it's not sunnah because the Prophet didn't do it, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, but rather it is mustahab. It is something that's desired. It's desired you do this. It is uh, good if you do this. It's easy to do this. Okay? So that's uh, one aspect. The other thing is, is that there, because it is desired, and the Isha, Salatul Isha Jama'ah causes the Taraweeh to take place. 
The question is, can you do this at your house? And the answer is yes. You can do this at your house. However, of course, it is better to do it in the masjid, where, of course, there is a proper adhan, which we can't do today, because, you know, at least in America, you don't have loudspeakers, where it's actually calling and inviting people. So there's an actual formal establishment of salah, which reminds me, uh, when I was talking about the person who is leading the tarawih has to have been in Salatul Jama'ah. Well, that leads us to another uh, situation, another mas'ala, another issue, which is that generally in the Hanafi fiqh, the reasoning of this issue that I'm about to explain goes like this. Look, there's only one Salatul Jama'ah proper in the masjid in the area where Salatul Jama'ah will be done in the, in the front. There's Adhan, then there's Iqama, then there's a Salah. That's the official Salah. Anybody that comes after, even if 10 people come after, they'll pray their individual prayer because they missed the prayer. They missed the prayer of the Masjid. So this is one of the opinions, is that, uh, and, and you'll, uh, you will pray in the sides or in the back, okay, where people will not cross you in the front. By the way, this is a mistake that a lot of people make, uh, is that, you know, they'll pray in the middle of the Masjid. Or they'll pray in a place where people can come in front of them. The way you should be is, when you come into the masjid, you should sit on the sides first. Okay? So you cover the front and the side. And the front and the right side. And then until the front gets to the left side. In the front. So when the people are coming, they're not walking in front of each other. Okay? So uh, I've seen like people, they'll finish their fourth, fourth prayer and then pray the sunnah prayer right in the middle of the masjid. That's incorrect. It's not the right way to do it. You should pray the sunnah prayers on this side. And when you come into the masjid, like on Jum'ah or even for Tarawih prayer in Ramadan, when you come to the masjid, you should not start your sunnah prayers right in the middle of the masjid. You should go to the side so no one will come in front of you. Okay? That, so, but, now here's another issue, which is that the real official salah is the one that's done salatul jama'ah after the adhan and the aqama. If you're going to do salatul tarawih at home, you should also still give the adhan and still give the iqama and then do a proper jama'ah. And then the people who have been in the jama'ah, then they start salatul tarawih. Okay? The person, if he is leading tarawih and he comes late, he has to do salatul jama'ah according to the Hanafi uh, fiqh. Okay? Uh, okay, now let's go back to the text. Now, as you can see from the text, there is a timing for salatul tarawih, which means what? If there's a timing for a salah, okay, what does that mean? That means that there's no qada after this. You know, there's only qada for the fara'id and some of the major sunnahs like the fajr sunnah or the witr prayer. But there's no qada. There's no making up missed tarawih prayers. Okay, it has to be prayed in its time. And if it's not prayed within its time, meaning from after salatul jama'ah, to uh, subah to the fajr time if there if you miss if you do not pray during this time then the next day you cannot pray the tarawih of the day before you can pray nawafil you can pray extra prayers we can't pray tarawih prayer tarawih prayer has to be uh, you know mostly the opinion is it has to be in salat al jamaah and it has to be done on time and it has to be done after isha prayers so this is why this is important. Uh, okay, so there is a timing for this, and there's a best timing for this, which is one third or half of the night to start from there. Wayastahib, and it is desired al jalus to sit down after four rakah. Okay, this is one of the things that we don't do that we used to do. Yastahib al jalus ba'da kull arba'a bi qudratiha or bi qadratiha that it is liked after every four rakah. So you finished uh, two rakah and two rakah. So four rakah. Now you sit as long as it took to do four rakah before you start the next four rakah. This is the actual uh, method, okay, according to the classical books. So you do four. Then in the olden days, what they used to do is they used to do four and then they used to read tasbihat, or go over the Qur'an that they're going to recite, establish a relationship with Qur'an, doing du'a to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
using that time to get closer to Allah, then they would do four marakah. And this was the ease, right? So you'd recite a small portion, and then you finish four rakah, and then you uh, have jalus, you sit down, and you remember Allah, and you do dua, and so on and so forth, for some time, and then after that, equal to the time it takes to pray the four rakah, then you do the next four. So now that's eight. Okay, so this is a totally different prayer than the Hajj, uh, the way the companions, the Prophet wasallam, the way they did it. And then, what does it say? وَكَذَا بَيْنَ تَرَاوِي خَامِسِ So there are five uh, moments where you take rest. Okay, so you pray four, 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 and then five of these, and then then the fifth after the fifth one is the width of prayer. And in the olden days, uh, I just want to mention this quickly. In the olden days, they used to even do tawaf if they were in Mecca. So they would pray four, and the people would go for tawaf, or or they would do different things, even to the point of doing tawaf. Or people would read uh, extra rakahs, right? And uh, and then also. It became ijma to finish the whole of the Quran. When Umar radiallahu anh started it, he his ruling at that time was that if it's a fast reader, he can read 30 ayahs. If it's a slow reader, 10 ayahs. And he kept it really easy. After that, uh, the uh, the agreement became uh, that uh, we'll read the whole of Quran. And so the khatmul Quran became, in the whole month of Ramadan, through the Trawi prayer, became like a sunnah. Okay? And so... Uh, so he says, وَصَنَّ خَطْمُ الْقُرْآنِ فِيهَا مَرَّةً One time in the month. وَفِي شَهَرْ عَلَى الصَّحِي And uh, in the month, finishing the whole Qur'an is correct. Uh, and now he says some important things about the person that's leading. وَإِنْ مَنْ لَا بِهِ قَوْمْ كِرْعَى بِقَدَرِ لَا يُؤَدِّي إِلَى تَنْفِيرُهُمْ فِي الْمُخْطَارِ Okay. So it's a very important legal point. Wa in malla bi If it if it if this will cause people, meaning the recitation of the Quran, finishing the whole Quran, if it will cause people to um if it will cause people to become bored. Wa in malla bi don't read so much Qur'an that it will cause people to not come to Salatul Jama'ah of the Taraweeh prayers. This is better. This is better. وَلَا تَرْكُ الصَّلَاةَ عَلَى نَبِي مُحَمَّدْ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى سَلَّمْ فِي كُلِّ تَشْحَدْ مِنْهَا So number one, if you have to reduce the recitation and have more people, is better than to do a lot of recitation and have less people. Okay, so this is one of the, the things that is uh, in this. وَلَا تَطْرِقُ الصَّلَاةَ عَلَى النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وسلم. And do not abandon, because people are praying quickly, and some of the fuqaha, they feel the prayer ends at, for example, أَبْتَحِيَاتُ لِلَّهِ وَالصَّلَوَاتُ وَالتَّيْبَاتُ أَسْلَامُ عَلَيْكَ أَيُّهَا النَّبِيُّ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ وَبَرَكَاتُ As-salamu alayna wa la ibadillahi as-salihin. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashadu anna muhammadin abduhu wa rasuluh. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. Without saying salawat upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, reduce the recitation. Okay. La tatruq salat ala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Bi kulli tashhad minha. Walau mala'a bi qawm ala mukhtar. Okay. Uh... By choosing this, even if people get bored, because of this, this you should not stop. And don't leave doing proper sana when you start the prayer, subhanakallah, bihamdika, and subhana rabbi al-a'la, subhana rabbi al in the ruku, in the sujood. وَلَا يَعْتِي بِالدُّعَا إِنْ مِلَا الْقَوْمِ You don't have to do the du'as after the durud Ibrahimiya if you feel the people are going to get bored. But always say the salams upon the Prophet. And if you don't want to say uh, du'as after that to keep people from not being bored, that's okay. Uh, now, 
uh, the next part. وَلَا تَقْدَى تَرَاوِي بِفَوْتِهَا مُنْفِرَدًا وَلَا جَمَعًا You cannot make up Salatul Jama'a of, uh, you cannot make Tarawi prayer up by Jama'a or individual after the time is up. You either pray within the time or you cannot make it up. And if you have no one to do it with you, then of course you can do it alone. But if you don't, if it, but it's better to, of course, have people with you and do it in Salatul Jama'a. Okay, so uh, what do we learn here? Uh, we, we learn a lot of things, but I have to give a few more rules, inshallah. Uh, but these are actually very complicated rules and each one of these two topics that I'm going to cover right now might require a video on its own. Um, so these are some of the basic rulings. Of course, uh, there's there's a, a lot more, okay? But now let me talk about sajda to sahab, okay? When do you make a sajda for making a mistake? The very simple rule is, when, so I'm going to explain to you the simple rule and then I'm going to ask a series of questions because I think, think that's the best way to engage the people and help them learn so that they can get the concept, okay? Uh, so let's talk about Sajdat al-Sahab a little bit and then Sajdat al-Tilawa a little bit. Okay, so Sajdat al-Sahab is when you make a mistake, you have to do an extra salam and a sajda. And there are different views on this amongst the different mazahibs, so I'm not going to go into details of that right now. But simply understand this. This is the rule. If you make a mistake but you're in the proper position, you do not have to do such to sahab. But if you break the proper position, okay, then you need to do such to sahab. Okay, so for example, there are two rakahs and then salam. So somebody stood up on the third. What does he have to do? Now, he has to, when he will go down, it's recommend, if he remembers in his third rakah, oh, wait, I was supposed to finish it off and I just stood up because, you know, people are memorizing Quran and they're reviewing their Quran and it's very taxing, people behind you, it, there's a lot of stress, so people tend to forget sometimes. And so, you know, he did two rakah, instead of saying salams, he stood up because he it was like Dhuhr prayer, Asr prayer, Isha prayer. And now he starts reading Fatiha and the Muqtadis behind him didn't correct him, they didn't stay sitting, they stand up with him. Now, now he's reading Quran and so now what? Now he remembers all of a sudden in the third rakah, uh, oh, I was supposed to sit down. So what should he do? He should sit down immediately, number one. Number two, he has to do sajda to sahab. Why? Because he broke the order of positioning. Okay? He broke the order of positioning. If you forget like a sajda, or you pray an extra sajda, right? Uh, for anything you m mess up in a, a positioning process, ordering process of salah, you have to do sajda to sahab. Okay? Now, that's the first point. And this can go on at many different levels. Over here, I want to mention if he's doing, if he prayed two, if he prayed two and stood up for the third, what should happen and what is the right thing to do is the muqtadis to say sitting. They should not get up. If you know for sure he finished his second and he gets up on his third, you should the muqtadis, the people following him, should stay sitting. And of course, if he insists, then you have to go with him. But it's better to keep sitting until he's forced to come back down and say his salams. And then you can discuss the matter afterwards. Right? So, if he stands up and then he reads the third rakah, he didn't realize it. Now, he's gone beyond the rakua. And now in the fourth rakah, he realizes, oh, I was supposed to do that in the second, I was supposed to do the salam on the second rakah, but I'm, he's already on the fourth. In the third one, he can go down and sit down immediately and continue the prayer till he ends it. Okay? But he has to do says the sahab. But if he goes to the fourth one, then he has to finish the whole prayer in its proper way, so it's two cycles and two cycles. Okay? And in that, the qira'ah of the last two will be counted, and the kira of the last, or the first two will not be counted, according to the Hanafi opinion, because uh, it, the the first two and that will have to be repeated in the next uh, cycle of the Tarawih prayer. This is in the Hanafi opinion. I don't want to go into the details of why. What's the uh, legal reasoning of that right now? But uh, if he prays, uh, the main thing I want to mention is 
that if you forget the order of things, okay, then you have to do sajda to sahab. There are some exceptions that if you break a major rule, like a major rule that is like uh, wajib, okay, within the salah, it's wajib to do that. For example, sajda to tilawa. Okay, there are certain verses of the Quran. If you read it, you have to go to sajda. Uh, the Hanafi scholars allow up to three ayahs after sajda to tilawa to come to the realization you have to do sajda. If you do, if you do not do sajda to uh, tilawa, and there are two ways to do it. One is, of course, as soon as you read the ayah that requires the sajda, you go into sajda, and then you come back up and you continue to recite. And if the person uh, stands up and he forgot where he was and he goes blank, he can go straight into ruku without reciting. But the better is that he recites at least three more ayahs, okay, and then goes into ruku. The other way to do it is instead of reading an ayah of sajda, tilawat to sajda, and then he goes into sajda. The other way is that you recite it. If you recite it, after that you can go into ruku, And then you go into sujood. So that way you're completing two things at one time. The normal ruku and sujood you have. And you're also doing sujood for sajda to tilawa. Okay. Now there are, in Sutul Hajj there's a place where there are two sajdas. One is accepted by the Shafi'i mazhab. One by the Hanafi mazhab. This is why in these two places specifically it's a good idea to go into ruku and sujood and ruku into sujood in both times so that all the people uh, that are behind you, Hanafi and Shafi, they're, uh, they're, um, they're happy, right? Because that's the job of the Imam, is to keep uh, the people behind him satisfied. So he, so he should go into ruku and sujood after the first ayahs of tilawah in Sutul in Sutul Hajj, and then the second one too. And instead of going into the normal uh, sajda and then coming back and up and reciting, you can, you can also do that, but there's a difference of opinion. The Hanafis don't agree with. So the other way is that you just go into ruku and then sujood, and that'll cover both. I hope I'm clear here on this. Okay. So the ordering of things is based upon what? The ordering of things. If you mess up on the order of things, then you have to do sajda to sah. What happens, for example, if somebody's reciting and makes a mistake, and you're, you didn't make a mistake in a position, you made a mistake in re recitation. And that, you're still in the proper position. You're in your standing position. So the people can correct him. If they know how to correct him, they can correct him. Okay. And usually the half is the person who's standing in front, who's designated to correct him, should correct him. Not everyone jump in during prayer to correct him. Okay. That's very wrong. And there's a certain way that the Hufaz, they know how to give the Luqma, how to give the person the information. So he knows, because they've also memorized Quran, that he knows he will take him one ayah behind where he recited it correctly so that he can continue from there. Not correcting just the word, uh, but you have to bring it back into their memory so you start from where they were correct and then they can recite from there. Okay. So anyway, everyone shouldn't jump in. The person who's designated should jump in and make the correction for him. As long as the mean, if, if the person makes a mistake and as long as the meaning doesn't change drastically, the prayer is okay. If, for example, it says, La ilaha illallah, there's no divine but Allah, and he ends up saying the complete opposite, the whole prayer has to be repeated. Okay? The same way, if sajda to tilawa, if there's a verse of tilawa uh, where you have to do sajda by reading a certain verse of Quran, if you don't do uh, sajda, okay, then you have to repeat the prayer. If you deliberately did not do sajda, then you have to repeat the prayer. Okay? And, if somebody does it by mistake or does it deliberately, the hukum will be the same. Because we look at the zahir. The zahir is, when we look at Islamic law, we look at what is apparent. What is apparent? You didn't read, you didn't go into sujood in the ayah that you're supposed to go to sujood. Okay? So, uh, let's see uh, what else we have over here. So, let me give you an example. Uh, let's say somebody uh, in the first, because you know you're reading many uh, rakah, so sometimes people can get confused. And after the first rakah, he sits down like as if he's thinking that I, this is my second. He hasn't made a position of mistake yet until he starts saying at tahiyatu lillahi. If he sits down and everyone, uh, uh, you know, uh, tries to correct him, and he gets up before he says the at tahiyat or completes the at lillahi if he then 
if he doesn't complete it or doesn't start it, depending upon the, uh, uh, the, 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 the scholar's opinion, if he doesn't complete it and he stands up and he continues his prayer, he doesn't have to do such the sahab because he, he didn't stay in that position. So the best is, it, the best opinion is if he starts saying at-tahiyatulillahi wa salawat in the first rakah when he's not supposed to, then he has to do such the sahab. If he didn't, he just sat down thinking it's the second one, but then he noticed everyone is standing up or everyone thought he's standing up and some stood up or that he got informed because you're not supposed to go ahead of the imam. So everyone sitting down and saying subhanallah, telling him to get up. Now he gets up without reading at tahiyat So now he doesn't have to do sajda to sahab. But if he started reading at tahiyatul lillahi, then now he has to do sajda to sahab. Okay? So that's a uh, part of this. So these are the basic, basic, basic uh, tarawih rule, rules that every Muslim should know. And so I've been through them, but it's actually very complicated when to do sajda to sahab, what the imam has to do uh, if he makes a mistake. It can become very complicated if he made the mistake in the first rakah, second rakah, if he stood up for the third rakah. It, it, but I'm not going to go into all those details. Uh, suffice to say that the most important thing is to understand the basic principles. How Tarawi prayer takes place, it is a sabab. Okay? And... Uh, then also understanding uh, why certain uh, rulings are made, what is the way of thinking about those rulings. And uh, for example, the salah has to be led by somebody who's sane Muslim and has reached puberty. Uh, it's like you can't drive without a license until you're a certain age, then you can, it's the same thing with salah. It's not your responsibility till it's your responsibility. Um, so I think this is enough for now. Uh, and later on if Allah wills and you can tell me in your comment section if you'd like more videos about Islamic law then I'll maybe make uh, a video specifically on Sajdat to Sahab and another video specifically on Tilawat uh, to uh, Sajdah but uh, give me your feedback let me know what you think if you benefited from this then maybe we can try to do once one a week inshallah ta'ala Alright, Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.